hopefully we're finally off. I hope so too, because you started two hours ago. <laughs> yeah, I've been in major bustle mode this morning and it drives Beverly nutty. I mean, it's only eight o'clock in the morning, you started at six. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, I, I'm a messy pup. It takes me at least an hour to clean up my side of the fence because <laughs> I'm so messy. But regardless, one of the things that Beverly did last night was she prepared a huge vat of curry, um, which has been in the fridge overnight. And um, it looks absolutely gorgeous. It's far too much curry for us. Um, but um, because um, Mr D Thermal Cooker is basically a um, thermos flask, the good thing about it is we can put it into um, Mr D and it will keep cool, thus free in your fridge. Um, but yeah, we will be off. Now all I've got to do is stow Mr D away. Well, the apprehension levels are high with this particular departure. We have um, gone through the checklist twice already and we're going to go through the checklist one more time before I start the engine. That's because we're so rusty we don't want to miss anything. Well, there's the fact that we're rusty, um, but also we're hoping that this is a big, a big trip and it's just... Honest to God, my stomach is in knots, and um, we're both ner we're both nervous. Yeah, absolutely, we are very, very nervous <laughs> because it has been so long. I know we've been over to Carrick and come back and done a couple of other little yeah, but I don't motors, but I, we don't, I don't, really I don't count, count Carrick those. as a trip. <laughs> we don't count those. We didn't even put it in the logbook. No, but I have started the logbook today. Um, but yes, just uh, go through the checklist one more time. Okay. Well, it's not a great start to the journey. It's raining. And you're getting soaked. I'm getting soaked. Somebody's got a nice new jacket that beats up beautifully, or I've got my old one that doesn't beat anywhere near as well. So. No, but you know we've got the engine on. I do have 11 knots of wind though, so maybe a sail can get out. Yeah, bear in mind that um, um, I'm making... You're making five of that 11. I'm making five of that 11, so nah, this not may, really. This may be the day that we get to test your light wind sail. You never know with uh, sailing what you're going to do, but, but uh, uh, at the moment it's called getting soaked. I have great hopes for the lighter sky over there. That, oh, is that a touch of blue over that way? It is. Oh my god! There's some blue. Oh, hey, if we get some sunshine and try out, it'd be wonderful. <laughs> one, of our, one of our viewers, uh, every time he says sit blue, he says, I see you're in the CGI studio. Yeah, and you know who you are, Ian. <laughs> well, we're on our way. Uh, plan A is to just keep going as best we can, weather permitting. Um, Gainer was asking me, do, uh, have I got any alternate plans? And I said, of course I do. Um, if the weather turns against us, depending where we are, Plan B is Strangford, Plan C is Ardglass, Plan D is Carlingford, Plan E is Lambay Island, and Plan F is House. There might even be a Plan G. <laughs> <laughs> but the most important one coming up on the thing is Plan T, which will be cut off. So, it's cold, it's wet, it's miserable, but the blue sky is getting closer and I'm hoping for sunshine. I want to be warm. on the water way up ahead. Fantastic! <laughs> well we're in Donoghadee Sound approaching the, uh, the set of boys, deputy and governor. I'm not sure which one's which. But uh, this is governor's the first set. But I'm glad to report that it's a lot calmer than the last time we came through here when we took a bit of a beating up didn't it? So fingers crossed, the sky's continuing to lighten. I can see sun around me. Blue sky behind me. I've already told Gator to turn the boat round, but she won't have it. Um, so we just have to hope the sun catches us up and we get a nice warm afternoon. But I'm pleased to say the passage so far is so good. Yeah. 
We're currently doing 7.2 knots. Oh yes, I did forget to mention that. Um, but um, and we've got 12 knots of wind, so we're actually hoping that once we slow down, <laughs> we'll have enough to put sail up. To be honest, with 12 knots of wind would be enough to fly the journey. Yeah. in the Donoghue D sound and I've uh, been told to hit the reverse button. Oh silence! <laughs> the sails are up, well Genoa um, is up but um, yeah I'm glad to report that not only is the sunshine out the uh, engine is off. Well, I would say you could bring her more in. No, I need to go out to sea. Oh, okay. Um, a little bit. When? Um, like, like in the next five minutes or in the next no, half no, hour? No, no, um, no. Next half hour. Because basically, if you look here, Bev. Yes, I see. Well, why don't we hold this course because it's taking us the right direction. Right, okay. And then we'll jive out. I go okay. around the obstacle and jive back in again. Okay. So, what's our. On our other chart, our time to arrival. Uh, that's that one. <laughs> I'm in the mullions, uh, which normally we're in for nighttime sailing. But it's just so cold today. Um, there's no warmth in the air yet. But what I'm doing at the minute is full underway. Uh, our sort of like standard go-to is tin of soup. And um, we tend to split it between two of us and drink it out of mugs. Uh, for later on tonight, we've got some passage food that I made the other night, which was curry. And what I tend to do is I tend to make a big batch cook. So when we were in um, Ballyhome Bay a few days ago, we thought we might get off. I made a batch cook in there. We didn't get to go sailing the way we wanted to, so what we did was we had that batch cook for dinner over the next couple of days. Yesterday I made a huge batch of chicken curry and um, that's what we'll be eating for dinner tonight and for any snacks underway. Uh, we generally have smaller portions underway. We find that if you eat a full dinner underway you tend to feel very bloated, you might even go a bit of sleep, things like that. It's better to have two smaller meals with a little gap between them, like a, an hour or two, then have one giant meal and then quite literally just go torpid and fall asleep or maybe even in rough conditions feel a bit seasick. So that's what we're doing. So right now it's tomato soup, a bit of bread and butter and that's lunch. And um, the tomato soup was just mixed half with water. It'll go into these mugs here, we'll have it up there and it will be enough to keep us going for two or three hours and in two or three hours we'll have another snack and we'll just keep doing that while we're under passage and it just means you, your body gets a constant level of sustenance but not too much too quickly and that's we find is the key to a nice comfortable passage. So it's time to um, get, yeah, get the spoon out, give this a stir and just hope that through the day the air gets warmer and things get more pleasant. It would be nice if we had a headwind, but we don't. We've got a tailwind, so there's no shelter under the spray hood. All the cold air is coming from behind us, and it is what it is. But the passage is pleasant, even though we're only doing three or four knots. I think we're doing about four knots at the minute. Um, but it's a pleasant passage for day one back at sea. Uh, thankfully, amazingly, around this area, there doesn't seem to be a vast number of crab pots. We don't know why. Normally this place is infested with them. But for once in our lives, well, everything's fine. For once in our lives, we don't seem to have to dodge them. So fingers crossed it stays that way. Well, we're uh, 
Contingency plan B may be coming into operation. <laughs> it certainly can. <laughs> Uh, we've just been listening to the weather forecast from the Irish Met Service. From the Irish Met Service, and uh, basically, for practically most of the coast, you're going to have a four for the, six for the whole Irish coast from Fairhead to is it under my head and. Did he mention who cared? Okay, he well, did help cared, yeah. Uh, basically, there's going to be a strong wind warning, four six, um, potential bad sea state. Uh, we would be exposed to that for several hours overnight, um, and you know what? We don't have to expose ourselves to it. No. So um, one of the options would be to get down and into a marina, but I will be honest, I have had it up to here with marinas. With marinas. I've been in them for six and a half months, and that's long enough. Exactly. And the whole point of sailing, and um, especially through the summer is to anchor as much as you can basically reduce your costs where you can oh, oh, yes, <laughs> we're, uh, we're misers here on salty lads <laughs> um, yeah let me let me introduce ebenezer, ebenezer scrooge's daughter <laughs> <laughs> or distant relative of some sort um yeah so the plan is that if we get the strike for that about 3 30 we're probably going to go up the narrows and go into the lock because in strangford There'll be no sea state to worry about. It'll be very, very sheltered. So even if it's gusting four six with the winds, you can find something to hide behind. But we and won't... there's quite a lot of different uh, anchorages that have uh, reported to have no sea state whatsoever. Exactly. So and um, it's been a while, what two three years? A couple of years since you've been, been in the So you know, at least it's going to be seeing something different and we can spend uh, as much time in there as we need let more weather go past and then we can just carry on yeah sounds like a plan bev right so now we've got to make sure we get there in time so we've got to pass a thing place called burial island which is just over there it's about half an hour away at our current speeds when we get past it we can angle our course in considerably more and we hope that, that will save us some considerable time because we're actually going away from strangford entrance at this point but the idea is that if we can angle toward it, we can cut inside a lot of the markers that are meant to keep big ships out of trouble because we, we don't have to worry about it. We are a small ship. We are a small ship and we've only got a draft of two metres, whereas all these guys with like six metre drafts would be grounded. So if we can get to Strangford entrance on time, we can just ride the current straight up. We, in our passage plan, we have the entry times all set out. We also have the initial bearings to take us up past uh, the flatty, up past Dogtail Point and past the sort of really bits the naughty bits with the root and wheel and, and other bits like that once we get past dogtail point stay pretty much in the middle of the channel till you're all the way up that's the plan but uh, let's just try and get that into action Despondent, not dejected. Oh, you think it's just that the um, Strangford Lockers uh, rejected us? If we had failed to get in here, down by Angus Rock and Bar Flatty, fair enough. But to get to the point where I can read the writing on the hotel and then find out that We just can't do the last half mile, no matter how hard we push things. Yeah, because we increased the engine revs, didn't we? Ben? We had the engine at max. Yeah. And we were going backwards at some tiny amount, quarter of a knot, something like that. As soon as we turned round, we were doing 12 knots. Yeah. I've got a very interesting, uh, weird pattern on the chart table, haven't I, Bev? I have no idea. I haven't looked. I don't care. I'm just despondent. It gets so close. Now I've got to go stay in Ardglass. Oh well. I would have preferred Strangford. Yeah, 
agree. And all because the flaming Met Office says, oh, it's going to blow a hoolie tonight. You're going to get blown around like a mad thing. Ha ha ha. Otherwise we'd keep going, but apparently the winds are worse in the south than they are in the north, so that sounds about right. We're heading toward the worst weather. Fantastic. And I was just so happy earlier, and all of a sudden I just feel like I've been kicked. And, uh, well, I guess we're not doing Stratford. Beverly and I are in Ardglass um, and this is low tide and um, if you just look around you can see that this is not a place you come in at low tide. Uh, we came in with about three meters of tide so you know we were fine coming in but it is currently 0.3 meters underneath the gill um, so we would really be scraping the bottom and um from and i've been in here when there was an abnormally low tide and um, there was a few more extra rocks that we could see but uh yeah if you do come in keep stake really close to the pontoons uh because um you can see just at the end of that pontoon there's no you know it, it there isn't any space really and the tide you know it's just the way it is. It's <laughs> it's a small marina. <laughs> is it yummy, dummy, curry in your tummy? Absolutely. But um, because we've come into our glass, um, we're going to have a full portion. Um, we'd only have half this if we were underway. But do you know what? The other good thing about Mr D is we've been out there. We've put the we've put all the sails and all the various things away. And um, we come downstairs and we've got a hot meal. What is wrong? There's, that is just exactly what you need after your crew feel tired and stuff like that. You need a hot meal. <laughs>